Okay, so I've heard about um, Biden bringing home troops from Afghanistan and, and the skirmish going on there. Now, I have been watching news for the last several months, and today reminds me of the first time I stopped watching news. When I was a kid, I would wake up in the morning and I would pour my boiled cereal and I'd have it while watching the news, right? And I even, I remember you know, when the Twin Towers hit, I actually went on a camping trip that week, but before the camping trip, I saw the first plane crash into the towers, right? Or heard about it on the news and then heard about the second one, like on the radio in the car. I listened to all that. Uh, I watched all that, except for I never saw any of the, thank God I really, I didn't see any of those really sort of terrible images of people jumping and things like that because uh, we were gone for that week. And at the end of the week, a lot of that wasn't being, it wasn't being replayed at that point. Um, so, but I, at that point I was watching news and that was when I stopped when we went to war with Afghanistan. And the reason I stopped at that point is because in my heart I was saying, what are you talking about? Why are we going to go to war? Like, how can we justify murdering people as a, uh, as a making things right for people being murdered do, you know to me that never makes sense right an eye for an eye does not make sense so I I really stopped watching the news at that point the news all the news was saying was like pro-war and I was not and I couldn't understand how no one could see my perspective and that made me just stop the news it was all you know fear-mongering and and I stopped so at like at that point I was you know, like 12 years old, something like that. Um, and so this, now this second time I've stopped watching the news and mostly it's because of censorship and propaganda. Like I haven't watched mainstream media in a lot of years. I got back into the news a few years ago, but I was trying to find a different perspective. I was trying to find non-mainstream media. I was, but I was still started off with mainstream media, but just little clips here and there, like on YouTube. And finally I started to find like YouTube media, Twitter, and like that was great and it was a different perspective, but even that was influenced and I wanted to take some time away from that. So knowing that I have not watched any news, I've I've barely watched anything about this Afghanistan except for I watched Biden's address and I just want to say like good job Joe Biden. Yes, there like a lot of your points that you could make were great um in in terms of like we can't change a nation. This is it's just not our job. Um and the biggest um negative feedback towards him I've heard or like how terrible this is is because of the women and what's going to happen to them under the Taliban and I'm not saying that's not a concern I'm just saying that war isn't the way to deal with that concern there are very real ways we can deal with that concern um like opening up our borders to Afghani people considering we have been at war in their country for 20 years we can say we will we will accept you if you need a safe place that is a real concrete way that we can help people going and bombing people is never a concrete way to help people and if you think it is it is probably because you're brainwashed by the media sorry to tell you this there's a reason I don't watch mainstream media if you're making some argument on behalf of women and thinking that that the logical solution of that argument is war, there's something mess, messed up in your logic stream. Uh, and like, I don't wanna criticize people or judge people. I'm just asking you to take a step back and think about what you're saying. There are all kinds of different solutions. And, you know, number one, I think, you know, when I was in India, when I first was in India and I was in Goa and I was at this little dosa stand, and a lot of the local kids came in on their breaks and would have little pow bhaji, like a little bread with a little little bit of curry. And I, I remember watching one day, the girls were coming in and they were being refused service. And so I asked, I was like, why aren't you letting them in? And he was like, oh, they're Konkani. He was saying they're local girls. Like, and I, like, I was like, okay, so? And that was all, all he could give me, they're Konkani. And he sort of laughed it off, okay. And like, like I wanted to do something. This is not right. But at the same time, I had to respect this culture that was not mine. It's not my place to come in there as a white person and go tell them how they should do it. 
And those girls, those girls knew it wasn't right. Those girls were standing up for themselves. Those girls were marching inside and being like, I can be here. Even if you don't serve me food, I'm still here. Like you can't stop me. Um, and that was those girls place. And they are strong girls. And I 100% have faith and want to support them in making that change. But it's not my place to make that change. And so, you know, in that moment, and again and again, when I've been in India and I've like, for sure, I think I've given a different perspective for my family members and, and um, the women in, in my Indian family. And I hope that just me existing and, and being a different perspective has changed things somewhat like within our family maybe like at least it's just given a different perspective but it's not my job to come in there as a white person and change his family like this is their family and it's my job to accept the gifts of it uh protect myself from something that doesn't feel right you know but I can't change them like that's not my my place in the world I I want to change the world right so so when I encounter all that what I can say is that this is my place, America is my place. I was grown here, I was raised here. I have experienced atrocities here. I have ignored atrocities of other people here. I have benefited from other people's atrocities as a white woman, right? Uh, as a, 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 a privileged white woman. Um, and the best thing we can do for women in Afghanistan or any country around the world, the best thing we can do is A, not bomb their country. Like that's a really good way to start. But B, we can fight for rights for women here. We can fight against domestic violence here. We can fight against uh, sexual assault here. We can fight against child molestation here. These are huge problems we have in America and our justice system currently really does nothing for them because you know when it comes to like domestic abuse people don't want to come against their accuser and even in case of sexual assault you don't necessarily want to come against your accuser if they're going to be go to jail for the rest of their lives you certainly don't want to go against an accuser if you're going to be targeted as most people are when they come out like if the reason we say me too the reason say you say believe women is because it is a so hard to speak up. It is very hard to speak up about something that is so shameful. And for some reason we feel shame if something was done with to us, but that's how our system has, has come about. Um, so of course it's hard to say something, but like also like <laughs> people who say something get maligned. They get, they, they get thrown under the bus. They get said they were in the wrong place. They didn't take care. They weren't wearing the right clothes. Like, If you really want to help women in Afghanistan, it's it's time to stand up for women here. And like, so this brings me around to me too. Like, go Biden, you did great. And this is a great reflection of our justice system because I believe Tara Reid, me too. I believe Tara Reid. And I believe that even rapists can make good decisions. Even rapists can evolve and make good decisions. Even men who support and expand the horrific, grotesque prison systems can make the good decisions and, and have the capacity for good. So uh, that is that's that's what I have to say. Like, good job, Biden. You brought troops home. I I still believe Tara Reid and. Uh, maybe we can have this as a lesson of, of why our justice system is, I mean, it's broken beyond harm. It's broken beyond like savior, in my opinion. There's just no, the aims of our justice system are, are cruelty and money and keeping black people down and, uh, you know, it should be abolished. But in the meantime, like, let's stop war. 20 years in a country is too much. Uh, zero years in a country is too much. We should not be occupying other countries. That's not our place. And let's do some internal work here and see what we can do about sexual assault, domestic violence, and, uh, you know, childhood molestation. You know, I would really love to see us tackle these topics at home and help to make positive ripples around the world. So good job, Joe Biden. Hashtag me too. I believe you, Tara.